Book 4, Chapter 2, The Plots of Sir Mordred In an upper room of the castle of Camelot, that same evening, while the candle light threw black, flickering shadows on the bare stone walls, Sir Agravain spoke with Sir Gawain, his brother, and Mordred stood near the door, his dark eyes shining strangely. Brother Agravain, said Sir Gawain, much moved, I pray you and charge you speak no more to me of such matters, for be assured that I will have no share in this business. I marvel that you can let this shame be, cried Agravain, his weak face working nervously. We all know that Lancelot loves the queen and would bring shame upon King Arthur and all the realm of Logris if he could. We have but to tell King Arthur, and this night Lancelot may be taken in the queen's chamber and put to death for treason. If you are afraid to speak, said Mordred quietly to Agravain, then I will go alone to the king. That I can well believe, said Gawain, for you, sir, are ever ready to stir up any unhappiness. But you, my brother, think before you do this thing of what will come of it. Whatever may happen, cried Agravain, I will tell the king. Alas, said Sir Gawain sadly, now is this holy realm of Logris about to be destroyed and the noble fellowship of the round table broken by civil war. But Agravain and Mordred went from the room and found King Arthur. Take twelve knights and do what must be done, said King Arthur, when he had heard all the tale. But woe to you if you have come to me with lies and slanders in your mouths, for this is the saddest night's work that ever has been done in this land. Then the two conspirators went to choose their followers, but some hours later Sir Gawain found King Arthur sitting all alone in the great empty hall in his place at the round table, with the tears running from his eyes and trickling unheeded through his gray beard and on to his hands. Sir Lancelot sat up late in his room with Sir Bors, and at last he rose to his feet and said, I bid you good night, fair cousin. I go to speak with the queen. Sir, said Bors, I counsel you not to go this night. Why not? asked Lancelot. I fear Sir Mordred, answered Bors for he and Sir Agravain are ever about to do you shame and bring ruin upon us all. <laughs> Have no fear, said Lancelot. I shall go swiftly and silently and return at once. God speed you well, said Sir Bors, and bring you safely back again. Then Lancelot took his sword under his arm, wrapped his long furred gown about him, and went through the dark castle to Queen Guinevere's room. And they had not been together for many minutes, when Sir Mordred and Sir Agravain, with their twelve knights, came to the door and cried, You traitor, Sir Lancelot, now you are caught! This they shouted with a loud voice, so that all the castle might hear. Alas, sobbed Queen Guinevere, now are we both betrayed. Madam, said Lancelot, is there any armor here I can put on? If so, these cravens shall not take me easily. Alas, no, said Guinevere, I have no armor, nor helmet, nor even a shield. Wherefore I fear that our long love is come to a sad end. But Lancelot turned to the door and shouted, Fair lords, cease from all this noise, and I will open the door quietly. Come quickly, you traitor knight, they shouted back. If you yield yourself quietly, we will take you prisoner and bring you before King Arthur. Then Lancelot wound his cloak about his arm, unbarred the door with his left hand, and opened it, opened it a little way. Immediately a knight, his name was called Grievance, rushed forward, striking at Lancelot with all his might. But Lancelot warded the blow with the thick folds of his cloak and struck Sir Colgrievance, such a stroke on the head that he fell down and never moved again. Swiftly Lancelot dragged him into the room and barred the door once more. Then, with the queen's help, he stripped the armor from the dead man and put it on himself. Traitor knight, come out of the queen's room, shouted Sir Agravain, beating on the door. Cease your noise, I am coming, replied Lancelot. I advise you, Sir Agravain, to run away and hide. Then Lancelot flung wide the door and stood there a moment, as fine a knight as ever this world had seen. Next moment he was among them, 
and the swords flashed like lightning among dark clouds. At the first stroke he slew Sir Agravaine, and then he laid about him with such blows that before long all his foes lay dead on the ground, except for Sir Mordred, who ran wounded from the place. "'I go now,' shouted Lancelot to the queen. "'But if you are in any danger for this night's work, be assured that I, while I am a living man I will rescue you.' Then Lancelot rode away in haste from Camelot, and with him went Sir Bors and Sir Lionel and many another knight, and they hid themselves in the forest nearby and waited to see what would happen. Meanwhile Sir Mordred came all wounded to Arthur where he sat with Gawain in the great hall. "'How comes this to be?' asked the king. "'Did you not take him in the queen's chamber?' "'He was there indeed,' gasped Mordred, "'and all unarmed, but he slew first Sir Colgrievance, "'armed himself in his armor, and killed all those who came against him, "'except for me, who escaped thus wounded.' "'Ah,' uh, said the king sadly, "'he is indeed a marvellous knight. "'Alas that ever, sir, Lancelot should be against me, "'for now I am sure that the noble fellowship of the round table is broken forever, "'for many knights will ride side with him.' "'What of the queen?' asked Mordred. "'She is guilty of high treason, and by the law she must die at the stake.' "'Then Arthur covered his face in his hands and wept.' "'Be not over-hasty, my lord,' said Gawain gently. "'How do we know that Lancelot and the Queen are guilty? "'Perchance she sent for him merely that she might thank him "'for saving her from King Meliagrance.' "'The Queen must die according to the law,' said King Arthur. "'But if Lancelot comes here again, he shall suffer a shameful death. "'Then God forbid that ever I be by to see it,' exclaimed Gawain. Yet he slew your brother Agravaine, said King Arthur. Often I warned Agravaine, answered Sir Gawain, for I knew what his plots would bring him to. Moreover, he was one of fourteen armed men attacking a man unarmed. Therefore I pardon Sir Lancelot his death. Make you ready in the morning to lead my queen to the fire, said King Arthur. Not so, my most noble king cried Gawain. It shall never be that I was of your counsel for her death. Then, said the king, call before me your brothers Sir Gaheris and Sir Gareth. And when they were come, King Arthur gave them his commands. Sir, they answered, what you bid us, that we will do. Nevertheless, it is solely against our will, and we will go there unarmed, and dressed in robes of mourning. Then make you ready, cried the king, for the hour has come. Alas, said Sir Gawain, that ever I should live to see this day. So Guinevere was led to the stake, dressed only in her smock, and many followed her in mourning garments. But Sir Mordred was there, fully armed, and with him a band of knights armed also. But when the torch was already lit, suddenly Sir Lancelot came and with his followers, cut his way to the stake, slaying many knights as he went, and carried off Queen Guinevere. But without knowing it, Lancelot killed both Gaheris and Gareth, who stood near the stake, unarmed and in mourning costume. Then Sir Lancelot and all those who favored his cause rode away into his own lands of Gwynedd, in North Wales, and fortified themselves strongly in his castle of Joyous Guard. Now indeed the realm of Logris was broken, for Britain was split with civil war, and there was hatred where old love and faith had been. When his anger passed, Queen Ar King Arthur repented sorely that he had condemned Queen Guinevere to the flames so speedily, and rejoiced that Lancelot had saved her. But now... The lifelong friendship between Gawain and Lancelot was ended, and a sudden hatred and a desire for revenge grew in its place. I swear before God that I will never rest, cried Sir, cried Sir Gawain, until Lancelot and I meet face to face and one of us is, in, is slain, for never can I forgive him for slaying my dear brothers Gaheris and Gareth, the good knight, slaughtering them unarmed and defenseless. 
And you, my uncle, I charge by the sacred order of knighthood, and as you are true king of this land, to make war forthwith against Sir Lancelot, both to avenge my brother and to rescue your queen. All the knights who remained faithful to him also begged King Arthur to make war, and at length he gathered together his forces and marched north until he came to Joyous Guard and laid siege to it. After fifteen weeks of fruitless siege, it chanced on a day that Sir Lancelot spoke from the gate tower with King Arthur and Sir Gawain. My lords both, he said, you cannot take this castle. Come forth, then, cried King Arthur, and fight with me in single combat. God forbid, said Lancelot, that ever I should fight with the most noble king of all time. He, moreover, that made me a knight. Now fie upon your fair language, cried the king. Know that I am now your mortal foe, and ever will be, for you have robbed me of my wife, slain my knights, and broken this goodly realm of Logris. Then Lancelot begged King Arthur to make peace, offering to give up Queen Guinevere and defend her innocence against all her accusers. And the king might have listened to him, had not Sir Gawain persuaded him against making any truce with Lancelot. And on the next day, Lancelot led his men suddenly out of the castle, for he was angered at length by the cruel taunt Sir Gawain had heaped upon him the day before, and a terrible battle ensued. In it Sir Gawain, seeking for Lancelot, struck down Sir Lionel and slew him. But Sir Bors smote King Arthur to the earth, and stood over him with drawn sword, crying to Lancelot, Sir! Shall I make an end of this war at a single stroke? But Lancelot answered, Strike not, or I will slay you myself, for I will never see our most noble lord, King Arthur, slain or shamed by any man. And then Sir Lancelot sprang down from his horse, and very tenderly helped King Arthur to his feet, and so on to his own horse, saying as he did so, My dear lord king, for God's sake make an end of this war. Take back your queen with all honor, and I will promise to leave this land of Britain and never return until you may need me. Then King Arthur was deeply moved, thinking of the great courtesy of Sir Lancelot and of all the noble deeds he had done in the past, and in spite of all that Sir Gawain could do, he made peace with Lancelot. And when all was agreed, Lancelot came unarmed before the king, leading Queen Guinevere by the hand, and he said, My most noble lord, I bring hither your queen. And if there is any knight who dares say that she is false to you, then I will fight with him to the death. Whatever I have done, or sought to do, this lady is innocent. But you have listened to liars and quarrel-makers, and as he said this, he turned and looked towards Sir Mordred. And by their evil mischief-making, the goodly fellowship of the round table is broken in sunder. The king may do as he will, broke in Sir Gawain, but never will we live Shall I make peace with you? For you slew my dear brother Sir Gareth and Sir Gaheris and Sir Agravain also. You know well that I love no man better than Sir Gareth, began Lancelot, and all my life I shall lament that I slew him, not knowing what I did. I will never forgive my brother's death, interrupted Gawain impassionately, and in particular the death of my brother Gareth. And now, said Lancelot, I must bid farewell to this dear land, into the holy realm of Logris, and go overseas into Amorica, in the land of France. Be sure that in time I shall follow you there, cried Sir Gawain. Peace reigned in Britain for a little while after this, but it was a broken and troubled peace. Forever Sir Gawain brooded on his brother's deaths, <clears throat> and ever Sir Mordred stirred up hatred against Lancelot. And at length so many knights sided with Sir Gawain that Arthur was forced to declare war on Sir Lancelot, and he gathered together a great army and went into France, leaving Mordred to rule Britain while he was away. They marched into Amorica to the castle of Benwick, where Lancelot had taken up his abode. And they remained there for a long while, and three times did Lancelot and Gawain fight together, and each time Lancelot overcame Gawain and wounded him almost to death, but it seemed now that Gawain was mad, for... Even when he lay desperately wounded, he ceased not to cry, Traitor knight, coward, when I am whole again I will do battle with you once more, for never will I forgive you for Gareth's death, and never will I rest until one of us is slain. Meanwhile in Britain Sir Mordred continued with his plots, 
and when he had won enough knights to his side, he announced that King Arthur had been killed in the French wars, and he persuaded the people to choose him as their king, and even had himself crowned at Canterbury. Then he seized Queen Guinevere and tried to force her to marry him. But she managed to escape from him and come to London. Thence she sent messengers to King Arthur, and meanwhile she and those who remained faithful to her retreated into the Tower of London and fortified it. Presently Sir Mordred came and tried to force his way into it. But it was too strong. He tried to persuade Queen Guinevere to come out, but she answered him bravely, I would rather die by mine own hand than be wife to you. Then the Archbishop of, Bishop of Canterbury, the same who had crowned King Arthur so many years ago, and who was now a very old man, came and warned Sir Mordred, Do you not fear the vengeance of God? he cried. King Arthur is not slain, and you do great harm to the queen to do all, and to all this land. Peace, you false priest, shouted Mordred, for if you anger me more, I will strike off your head. Sir, answered the archbishop, if you, have not your, if you leave not your sin, I will curse you with bell, book, and candle. Do your worst, cried Mordred. I care not for you or your curses. So the archbishop left Sir Mordred and gathered all the clergy together and cursed Sir Mordred, putting him outside of the rites and blessings of the church. Then Mordred sought to kill the archbishop, but he fled away to Glastonbury in Somerset and there became a hermit at the abbey. Queen Guinevere's messenger had reached King Arthur by this time, and swiftly he marched to the sea coast with all his men and set sail for England, but Mordred was waiting for him at Dover, and a terrible battle had to be fought before he and his men could land. At length, however, they were all ashore, and then they charged the rebels and sent them flying over the downs, Sir Mordred leading the flight. When the battle was over, King Arthur found Sir Gawain lying mortally wounded, for the last wound which Sir Lancelot had given him had broken out afresh. Alas, my beloved nephew, said King Arthur, kneeling beside him. Here now you lie dying, the man whom I loved best in all the world. And now all my joy is gone, for you and Lancelot I loved best of all my knights, and I have lost you both. Ah, oh, my dear lord, said Gawain, all this is my doing. Oh, I have been mad of late, mad with wicked pride and anger. If, sir, no, if the noble Sir Lancelot had been with you, this war would never have come about. I forgive him now. Would that I had forgiven him sooner. Can he ever forgive me? Then Gawain asked for pen and ink, and he wrote a letter to Sir Lancelot. O oh, Lancelot, flower of all noble knights that ever I saw or heard of, I, Gawain, dying by, my, by your hand, and by a nobler man no one might be slain. Beg your forgiveness. Come again, noble Lancelot, come with all the speed you may, for the realm of Logris is in deadly peril, and our lord King Arthur has need of you. This day we landed at Dover and put the false traitor Sir Mordred to flight, and by misfortune I was smitten again upon the wound that you gave me. And now I write this in the very hour of my death, and, oh, I beg you, the most famous knight in the world, to come swiftly. Of me you will find only the grave, but come at once before Mordred can gather fresh rebels. Noble Lancelot, I salute you, and farewell. Then Sir Gawain died, and King Arthur wept at his side all the long night through. <laughs> 